Hi, good day. This is Paul from Solace. I'm going to be doing another video for our inverter troubleshooting series. Today I'm going to be um, discussing on how to troubleshoot communications for our meter. So generally we have our meter installed at our grid connection and we've got our inverter installed wherever it is installed. And there's a, a long cable, sometimes short, but it's, it's a variable that's unknown to us and some installations need to extend it and some can just use the cable right out of the box. But I'm just going to go through some stages on uh, steps on how to troubleshoot if there's an issue with the cable, is it an issue with the meter, is it an issue with the inverter. So I'm going to start off with is the inverter sending out RS-485 communications for it to communicate to the meter. So we can always do that by using a multimeter, setting it to voltage mode and then selecting DC voltage. So this this meter here is defaulting to ac you select the dc and the range is in a good range so it's measuring nice low voltages a good result would be between one volt and five volts turning it on and selecting dc there you go and you're looking for between one and five volts firstly this port here One point six volts, but it's oscillating. It's moving around a bit. Um, but anything above one volt is a good result. You can actually get polarity from this as well. So that's another useful tool on working out how to wire these up. But extremely helpful on working out that this inverter is pushing out good RS four hundred five communications to the meter. And then the next thing we do is this cable is running through to my meter. I'm not sure if there's a break in this cable anywhere along through to the installation along to the meter. So I can just confirm if the meter is pushing out RS-485 communications by putting my probes into two of the pins. Polarity is not so important here. We're just confirming if, they're, if I'm getting anything. Um, so that's all good. And this voltage is slightly higher, but it's still within that range of between one volt and five volts. So that's a good result. That's telling me that this cable, I'm getting meter communications. So there's absolutely no reason why when I plug this in, it shouldn't work and it does work. So that's, that's an interesting one. So I'm gonna go through to moving to the meter and then we can do those troubleshooting steps on that side. So the sec second stage of troubleshooting the, the meter communications is, is looking on the meter side. So if we had issues on the inverter side, but on the meter cable, so we weren't getting voltage on the meter cable, you would move along to the meter to see if where the issue is. Is it on the cable or is it the meter that's not pushing out comms? And the way to confirm that is I've plugged in this cable back into the inverter so that 1.7 volts that we tested on the output of the inverter COM port should be seen here if this cable is perfect. So you, you grab your multimeter, again set it to voltage DC, um, low range, so it's, it's a low voltage between one and five volts, and you go to pin seven and pin eight on the, on the plug and you, you push it in. And there you go. Uh, I saw it. There you go. 1.7 volts. So that confirms that this cable's perfect, but we, we knew the setup was perfect. But um, if you weren't getting voltage here, for example, um, you know that you were getting voltage at the inverter, it confirms that the, the um, the cable's broken. If you are getting voltage here, it means that this meter is the issue, but then you wouldn't have seen the, the, the voltage on the other side. So um, you can use those troubleshooting steps to work out exactly where is the issue. Is the issue at the meter? Is the issue on this cable? Or is the issue on the inverter? And then we, we generally, for your single phase systems, we've got two types of meters. So we've got our acrometer and that's all, all the, all the stage I've just spoken about is about the acrometer. So I'm just going to plug that one back in. And then we've also got these Eastron meters that we're shipping lately with the inverter. And the RS-485 comes out the top there. It's pins 9 and 10. And here you can just stick your multimeter in and you should be getting voltage on the output. So this one, you can even on this side of the um, installation, you can troubleshoot where the communications is or where it is not. 
and get an idea on how to troubleshoot these, this communications. I'm just going to go through the, the difference, different meters that we supply with Solus uh, single phase hybrids. Um, so starting off, we shipped out Acryl single phase meters with them and they communicate to the inverters through these RJ45, it's RS485 communications. And at the bottom here on the left hand side, you've got the CT connection points into pins five and six, white into pin five and six is, is black. And the inverters get shipped with this CT already plugged in. So that's quite helpful and already done for us. And then on the top of this meter, the only thing you've got left is live into pin one and neutral into pin four. Um, all of these details are shared on the side of all our meters. So even the Eastron meter has shares these details. You can see a full wiring diagram on the side. And then on the Eastron meter, it's a little bit nicer. You've got, instead of an RJ45, you've got a um, just screw in terminal blocks, pins nine and 10. And then you've got on the bottom of the meter, these are CT connections. You do not connect live in and live out here. These are small little terminals and you put the terminal, the, the cables going to the CT into here. And um, then finally, you do need voltage coming in here. A meter needs to measure voltage, it needs to measure current, and it measures voltage on the top pins, um, live and neutral, and it also gets the voltage values from those two pins. To continue on, on troubleshooting a Solus hybrid meter, for an installation, I'm going to talk about one of the most common things I find getting done is at reversing the CT. I'm going to change the settings on the inverter um, to reverse it. I'm not going to physically re reverse it, but you could do the exact same thing. It's, 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 it, there's no difference between the two. It's a nice function here that you can correct it on the inverter instead of physically rotating it. Um, so it, it won't go anything wrong here because there's no dynamics in the system but as soon as the dynamic happens in the system so I'm going to introduce a 500 watt load in this inverter is going to think that that 500 watt load is an export and not an import as you can see there it detected it as an export when it detected it as an export it quickly started charging the batteries and in charging the batteries it became a bigger load but the CT is the wrong way around so it saw that load as an export it increased the export therefore the battery increased its charging further and it continually increased its charging until it reached its absolute maximum the reason why it's it's only doing 2200 is another subject but i'll just get into that quickly it's got a charge limit of 40 amps so it's actually charging at its absolute limit but that's the you can see that that's the reason why i've got a ct the wrong way around and if I go along and just switch my CT to the correct position, you'll see that the control will make a lot more sense. It will look to reduce the grid power, which is the job of this inverter in self-use mode. It, 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 it works this charging and discharging power to get that meter power as close to zero. And there you can see it's, it's reasonably close to zero, 10 watts, 20 watts, um, and it, it eventually will, will, will drop down to zero. Um, a very important screen to look at when troubleshooting a meter is um, in, the, in the menu, the first menu, in information screen, you got your um, standard parameters, solar voltages and currents and voltages. Then you've got your grid meter information and this is where you can find your grid meter. Yeah, you've got your meter power, your energy, and it's just really that power that you're really interested in.